This is my review of the 2019 Specialized Turbo Levo. I've owned this since the launch day from the 18th of September. I've ridden it as much as I possibly can to give you a really good overview of the bike as, from an owner's experience. Trail centres to cross country, really long 75 mile rides, and I've ridden in some of the most beautiful conditions and some of the worst conditions, like so so wet, muddy, torrential rain. And I feel that I've given this bike a really really good test so I can bring you my thoughts on what's great about the bike, what isn't so great about the bike, and if you are considering buying one of these or uh, owning one. Um, from my perspective, from an ownership experience, what's it been like? Because that ownership experience is really, really important from the dealer backup, from the warranty, because these are expensive bikes. They're not like normal mountain bikes. They've got electronics in them, motors in them. They do require a bit more thought around the purchase, I think anyway. And um, I just want to share with you my experience. I picked it up on day one from Berkshire Cycles, who by the way are fantastic. If you want to know anything about the Levo, Kineva or anything turbo um, from the specialised range of bikes, speak to Chris. They are just local legends down there. They're fantastic. Not just great pricing, but great experience when you go and get the bike as well. So I've absolutely loved riding this bike. I said when I did the preview video, which was when I picked it up, um, it feels like a totally different bike to the 2018 Turbo Levo, which by the way, is a fantastic bike. The 29er wheels on this really, really make it just feel like it can hit pretty much everything. You get the increased momentum with the bigger size wheels. Uh, and for me, because I'm I'm quite tall, I'm six foot three. I've got the XL, and I think the 29 uh, fits me better. Well, I, I know it does. It feels much much better when I'm riding. It's got an all new battery design, a much thinner battery that fits inside the down tube. All new motor. It's got the Bros Mag S motor, which is quite a bit lighter, about half a kilo lighter. It fits just into there, as you can see in the tube, in the down tube. It's got a new motor cage that sits in, all in. It saves a huge amount of weight over the previous design. The Bros motor also has this new flex power mode, which essentially means as soon as you start pedaling, it gives you instant engagement, which is really, really noticeable if you're in a really steep incline and you just want the bike to start going as soon as you start pedaling but the new design is pretty cool yeah tell you what kind of gives you almost instant power as soon as you put a little bit of torque through the pedals so the older motor to get started on these inclines was a bit trickier well, because you needed to give it a bit of a bit of welly all right boys whereas these you can just uh, pop a little bit of torque through it and it'll just go it's an expensive bike six thousand pounds um, there are much much cheaper bikes that you can get which will be higher spec and have you know if you're looking at components spec for spec it'll just this will lose out massively. I mean, this is six grand. It's not even the top model. It's it's two models down. Uh, this this is the Comp Carbon. It's got Fox Rhythm 34 forks. It's got a Fox uh, kind of standard Fox shock on it. It's got a GX shifter. So if you're comparing on paper, 
this is going to lose out to most bikes out there however components are only a part of a bike and it's the whole package the geometry the dealer support all of that kind of stuff makes your ownership experience or can break your ownership experience so this is a, an expensive bike but i believe if you're located near a, a good specialized dealer and in my experience the majority of them are really really good that if anything goes wrong you've spent a lot of money and you're going to get some really really good backup with it the first thing i noticed with the bike was just the way that the front end feels compared to the 2018 i felt on the 2018 that the front sometimes felt a little bit sketchy like i was tipping it into the corner it felt vague i tried setting up my fork many many times lots of different tire pressures different tires maybe it was just because of the geometry of the bike and the size of of me being over six foot six foot three which is one meter 91 something like that um maybe i just didn't fit it as well as i could but i i feel that this one feels way way more planted and gives you more feedback at the front Twenty-nine wheels, which um, you might think is unusual when most manufacturers have been going to 27.5, but you do get the increased roll in momentum with a 29er. Oh, hey! Yeah! I've actually got some DT Swiss wheels on here. They're, they're HX 1501s which um, are specifically made for e-bikes. I'll go through that in a bit, the reasons why I've moved over to those. 29er for me just feels so, so good. And I know a lot of people on their 2018 Levos are moving up to 29er wheels and a lot of the reports are fantastic. People are having really good experiences with the 29er wheels on the Levos. The front wheel's got a little bit of a ding in it where I've, uh, I must have got some kind of uh, you know rock strike or something but i don't recall hitting anything really hard but you know that's that's a little bit damaged which i don't know maybe the wheels are a bit lighter than well i had carbon on my last bike so you know they're not quite as tough as that but that's a little bit dinted and i think i've bent the left crank arm i am notorious for bending crank arms but I don't know if you can see down there, but the left crank arm feels like it's slightly off. It looks like it's slightly off. So caused a little bit of damage to the bike through not a huge amount of abuse that I've thrown at it. It is so nimble. Right, it's as nimble as the pivot shuttle that I rode around here many months ago. And when I rode that bike, I said the future is now with that bike and this bike feels very very close a lot of it i believe is you know down to the weight because 20 kilograms is in my opinion the sweet spot for an e-bike and uh or under 20 kilograms should i say i'm sure when the tech gets lighter it will feel even better but right now this is 21 kilograms and uh, you know it feels pretty damn awesome at 21 so nimble over those you know little kind of lip yeah probably wouldn't be fair to do a review without mentioning some of the things that um have been really apparent since the launch of this bike there were a small batch of them that had a really really noisy motor i got one of those you can tell the difference here i'm going to play a comparison right now so you can hear the really really noisy original motor and then the new motor that's in here
So there are a small amount of bikes that were affected. Then Specialized put a pause on the bike being delivered to dealers whilst they made sure that all of the ones that were gonna be delivered after a certain date were not gonna have that problem with the motor. So by the time you're watching this, that shouldn't be an issue. But I just wanted to mention that it was disappointing to many that bikes got out there with maybe faulty motors. Uh, in no way were they dangerous or did they hamper the ride, but they were just really noisy. I mean, it was slightly embarrassing riding past some people with that noisy motor. You gotta question why uh, those bros motors were in the bikes from the beginning, what's bros is quality control like, questionable. Um, I would expect that with a big product like this and it launched to amazing fanfare that these motors should have been thoroughly tested by bros slash specialized. I had no issues worrying about kind of would it be replaced because I knew that they would, I knew that they wouldn't be happy with that noise and wanted to put it right. The other thing that many, many people have mentioned is an area of the bike that I'm gonna show you now that collects a lot of trail, a lot of crap, a lot of mud, leaves, twigs, sticks, probably could have been picked up in testing this bike uh, and specialized realizing that there's an area right here that's prone to filling up with um, lots of trail debris. And again, it's, it's not gonna be a problem because the, the motor is sealed, but what it does is it leads to a lot of stuff getting inside the motor casing. Specialized have got a fix for it. They've got a new way of um, preventing stuff getting into that little gap. And all new bikes from a certain date will come with that new little sponge piece on it and different motor housing. So they've redesigned throughout their production process the motor housing slightly. It's gone from a three bolt cover to a four bolt cover. So all newer bikes will have that new cover. Um, what it means if you've got one of the earlier models is that you can get that little sponge put on by your dealer or yourself. It's just a real kind of two minute job and it just shields some of the hole up so not a lot of the debris can make its way into the motor casing. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so you can see I've just been on a little ride in Swinley Forest. Slightly muddy, but not like the wettest of days, but you can see down here how much mud and crap has built up around that area there. And there's a little gap just down there. And what it does is it lets a lot of that stuff get into the motor casing. Specialized, I've put a fix out already, but just something to be aware of. Fantastic swap multi-tool in here. This is so handy. Just for doing basic adjustments. Like if you have fallen off a few times, the bars have moved around and you know, this is so good to just get out of here and just adjust or have your multi-tool on you all of the time. It saves worrying about having a bag that you need to carry around and if you don't like to carry around stuff, um, this is ideal and it's so, so handy. You don't need to go rummaging through a backpack to pick anything up. I think that's a really, really neat idea. Remote, really, really easy to operate. Dropper just down here, really um, ergonomic, I would say. The specialized TCU, I think it's turbo control unit or something like that, just sits on the top of the bike. now. It is much, much easier to turn on and off and to see which mode that you're in. And you can see the battery level just here and the mode that you're in. So as I change mode, you can see here the beeps, that's off. So the motor's off, bike's still on, but if you just want to ride it with the motor off, save battery going downhill or whatever, you can turn it off completely. And then you've got eco, trail, turbo, and the battery level just underneath. What I would really like to see though, is a percentage indicator on there. So, you know, like a little LED with just 56% remaining or whatever. And it may seem like a really small niggle, but when you're riding along and you're doing quite a speed and you glance down, it's sometimes difficult to see exactly what you've got. Are you on 40%, 60%? And I find myself having to stop completely and, and kind of count one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I've got, you know, and it, Again, it's a really, really small little niggle, but I think that this can be improved with just a simple two digit like LED display down there. Glance down a bit like your phone, you know, you scroll down or you can see exactly what your percentage is or your laptop or whatever. That'd be really, really neat. 
Dropper on this one is a X-Fusion 150mm dropper. I prefer this to the command post. This one is a lot, lot smoother. Look, I'll show you. It is a bit heavier. I think it's about 100 grams heavier though than the command post, so it's not the lightest, but I do, I do really like it. Fox Rhythm 34s have been perfect for the riding that I do. I mean, I'm not an enduro racer, although I did do an enduro on this bike. It's been fine it's been you know it's worked really really well it's only 34 mil stanchions but it seems stiff enough for me um quite rate them actually for a a, a budget fork and the fox float dps shock on the back has been pretty good as well i just want to mention the wheels as well because i have changed over to the dt swiss hx 1501 the e-bike specific wheel set from dt swiss to be fair they did contact me and say do you want to try some do you want to test some see what you think and uh, i was like yeah why not that sounds amazing so thanks dt swiss however what i did notice is when i took my original levo wheels off the 29ers that come stock with it they were battered they had so many dings in them, little dents where my riding is is the reason for it, to be honest with you, where I've hit little rocks and rock gardens and not cleared them properly. And um, I've, I've absolutely battered them already in six weeks. So these HX 1501s from DT Swiss are engineered specifically for e-bike use, a bit stronger, a uh, little bit heavier, but they've made them for the extra forces that go in um, and the extra weight that an e-bike carries and the hubs and all that kind of stuff they are uh, just made to take a little bit more of a beating so they've worked really really well um, again I my riding I'm not the most skilled rider I do hit rocks um, when I should really be clearing them no dents on these whatsoever they are quite they're built like tanks uh, they're not too heavy at all and they really really suit the 29er Levo. They've been really, really good and they are in top condition still. So what's the bike like to ride, which is one of the real important things? Well, I think it's fantastic. I think it is one of the best e-bikes in the world right now. I think that the combination of the lightweight of it, the, uh, the 29er wheels, the change in the geometry, slightly slacker, slightly longer, just makes for an amazing bike to ride. And I have had so much enjoyment riding this, probably more so than any other bike because the, the package that you get, the bros motor, the revised geometry, um, the just the feel of it, the nimbleness of it um, feels just fantastic to ride. It just creates a real, real nice feeling to it. And just the, again, the overall ownership experience. And what I mean by that is you go to your dealer, they look after you. You know that you're going to get a really, really good warranty from Specialized. I knew about the motor, but I knew that Specialized would sort it out. I knew that my dealer, Berkshire Cycles, would put a new motor in it, so I'd have no problems there. Um, and that's what I mean about the ownership experience. So when I'm talking about ownership experience, I'm talking about the whole ecosystem of buying a bike, from the software to the support to the dealer backup. Um, that, to me, is really, really important. So yeah, the 2019 Levo is not perfect. It has a couple of niggles, which hopefully Specialized will address. I know they're making a new motor housing. They're making a new little fixture to stop all the crap getting into the engine. These are only minor niggles, but probably should have been there since day one. But I've loved it. I wouldn't choose any other e-bike. I've loved the hundreds of miles that I've already put into this bike. If you do want to know anything, as always, email me rob at emtbforums.com. I try and answer all the comments below, so leave me something and I'll do my best to answer it and I will catch up with you all soon. Peace out. Bye.